Father, I'm just going to get supper. Are you coming down? Father? Dad, are you all right? I got us here. If you'd been navigating for Columbus, America would still be a lost continent. I thought you'd like to see a little of England. A little of it. You must have seen all of it. Come on, let's check in. I think you have some rooms reserved for us. The name is John Mannering. Uh -huh. Hello. please. Evening. Evening. Hello. You uh, down for the fishing? Wish we were. We're here on business. Business? <laughs> down here? <laughs> rooms will be ready in half an hour. Would you care for a drink while you're waiting? Thank you. Pint of shandy, please. I'll have a lager. Fred, give me a pint of shandy and a lager, will you? Frederick. Anyone? No. By the way, my name is Richard Thornton. I'm the local quack. I'm John Mannering. This is Cordita Winfield. Hello. Are you going to be here long? Well, if everything goes all right, we'll be going back tomorrow evening. Oh, pretty. 
Oh, you must know the man we've come down to see, Mr. Carl Grant. I'm afraid you've had a wasted journey. Carl Grant died last night. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. An accident? No, heart attack. He wasn't a young man. Did you know him? Well, not personally. I sold him several things. We did our business by correspondence. I understand he's leaving the country and wanted to sell off his antiques. We just came down to do a valuation on them. Well, uh, I suppose that'll be up to his executors now. Or his daughter. Is she here? Oh, yes, she lived with him. She was with him when he died. He took it very badly. Very badly indeed. She's a very highly strung girl. As a matter of fact, I don't like the idea of her being up in that house. Nobody with her? No. I wouldn't get anybody in this village to stay a night in that house. It's got a bad reputation. All scared stiff of the place. Can I use your phone? Thank you. Three seven one, please. I think I'll go for a walk. Don't make a noise coming in. There's other guests, you know. The door will be on the latch. Oh, I won't be that long.
What happened? I ran right into me, sir. She's painted, I reckon. Who is she? Young lady from the big house, Carl Grant's daughter. Running from something. Scared she was. Running from the house. Hey, we better get this kid to the dock. Right? Oh, sir. Oh, no. You, uh, do you live around here long? Uh, all my life, sir. I reckon I know these parts like the, like the inside of my hand. How long have the Grants lived here? Uh, now, newcomers, they was. I've been here more than, what, oh, two, three years, I reckon. You get to know them at all? No, nah, nobody knew them, sir. A bit like me, get themselves to themselves. They hardly ever went out of the house. She did all the shopping. She talked to anybody, though. No, sir, the, the doctor here, I reckon he knows more about them than anybody else. They don't sound very sociable. Oh, that's what that other fellow said, sir. What other fellow? One what's been asking me all the questions about her. How is she? She'll be all right. I'm giving her a sedative. She's asleep now. Did she tell you what scared her? No, she didn't say a word. But it's not difficult to guess. Her father's death. Being alone in that house. Oh, I could tell you things about that house, sir. Like what? Oh, just things. People around these parts think it's haunted. That's just foolish talk, of course. What have you seen up there, Ben? Oh, this and that. Comings and goings. They work in the dark like I do. You see things. When you knock them back in the pub every night like you do, I'm not surprised you see things. You think what you like, Doctor. I know what I see. I'd better be going now. I got my living to earn. Well, you forgot this. <laughs> Watch out for the gamekeepers. Look in at the pub tomorrow and I'll buy you a drink. We do that, sir. Good night to you. <laughs> you think there's anything in what he said? No. Don't take any notice of old Ben. <laughs> Give him half a chance and a couple of pints, he'll tell you a tale. Smugglers, treasure maps. Will you be keeping the girl here for tonight? Yes, yeah, she'll sleep now for 10 or 12 hours. Frankly, Mannering, I don't think she'll be in any condition to talk business tomorrow. For that matter, for a couple of days. I see. Oh, yes, of course. So you'll be going back to London, then? Well, I don't suppose there's any point in my staying now. I'll have to buy you that dinner on my next trip down. Thanks, that's a date. Oh, there's one more thing. Uh, that fellow was asking questions about the Grants. Did you talk to him? Asking questions? What man? Was well, somebody Ben mentioned. Oh, well, I don't know anything about it. Another of Ben's stories, I imagine. Probably. Well, thank you. Good night. Good night. second cup tastes better. The taste buds have died by then. I think I'll just finish my cigarette, and then I'll go out and collect my stuff. I'm already packed. Well, you can unpack. What? I thought we... We're staying down here a while longer. More coffee? Oh, that's what it is. No, thanks. Oh, uh, just a minute. I found this last night. Maybe you could put it in the bar. Somebody might want it. Oops. Sorry. It really is a lovely day. Mr. Mannering? Yes. Miss... Winfield. Yes, I saw your names in the register. Uh, I'm Frank Ashton. Hello. Obviously down for the fishing. That's right. What are you after? The big stuff. I've had some really good sport down here. Can I pour you some coffee? Oh, that's a terrible thing to say. I was trying to be friendly. 
Sandwiches. Anything else? No, thanks. Well, there's a whole sea full of fish waiting to be caught, so I'll see you later. Good morning. Miss Grant. Oh, Mr. Mannering, I'm so glad I caught you. I thought you might have already left. Oh, it's all right. I'm in no hurry. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. Are you feeling better? Oh, yes, thanks. The doctor wanted me to stay in bed, but he wasn't there this morning, so I just slipped out. Oh, you think that's wise? Oh, yes, I'm all right. That business last night, it was so silly. I'm sorry to have put you to all that trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I wanted to call you this morning, but I don't imagine you want to be bothered by business at a time like this. Oh, but I do. That's why I came. I want to get everything finished up so that I can move away from this place. The sooner, the better. All right. I, um, I thought we might go straight up to the house, and then you could get started. We're all through here. Cataloging shouldn't take long. Just what was it they scared you last night? Oh, imagination mostly, I suppose. I kept hearing sounds and thought they were footsteps. And then the telephone. It was that that started it, really. It woke me up. That must have been my call. I let it ring for quite a while. Oh, it stopped just as I got to it. But it was after that. It seemed to go out of order. And then when I picked it up, I heard... It sounds so silly, but it sounded like somebody breathing. Well, the whole place seemed so frightening. My father's coffin being there didn't help. The doctor was going to have it moved this morning. this place over. You notice anything missing? I don't know. I don't think so. It's George and Silver. It's valuable. It's not the sort of thing an ordinary thief would leave behind. What do you mean? Whoever did this was looking for something special. Special? I don't understand. What sort of thing? Well, I don't know. But I'd say that last night, Somebody deliberately tried to scare you out of this house. They'd have time to search. For what? Joyce, from what I hear, your father was a rather secretive sort of man. Didn't get out much, make friends. Is that right? What's wrong with that? Nothing. Joyce, it could be that your father's trying to hide from somebody. But he had nothing to hide from. Oh, it's ridiculous. Is it? Just exactly when did your father decide to move from this house? About a fortnight ago. That's the time somebody started to ask questions about him in the village. No. No, it's not true. Why would he want to hide from anybody? How long have you and your father lived here? About three years. He and my mother were separated. I was with her until she died. After that, I, I was away at school. Did you see your father much during that time? No. Not at all, really. His job. He was traveling most of the time. What are you trying to say? That he was a criminal or something? No, no, of course not. All I'm saying is that your father had something to hide. He had something he wanted kept secret. Fifty or sixty pounds, I imagine. It's a copy of a Renaissance bronze called The Warrior. It's not particularly valuable. Why? My father mentioned it just before he died. It seemed important to him. Well, I don't see anything particularly special about it. Perhaps I was mistaken. I couldn't hear him very well. By the way, who is this? Well, that's my father, taken a few years ago, of course. 
coffee and sandwiches, except I can't find the cups. Oh, I'll get them. What have you got there? It's a picture of Carl Grant. Why the big interest? It's only that I've seen that face somewhere before. Is it important? It must have been a long, long time ago. Yes, I think it's important. Somebody frightened a girl out of the house last night and searched the place. Look, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to move in with Joyce for tonight. Whoever did this may try again. What are you going to do? Well, if I hurry, I can catch the afternoon train to London. I'll be there by 8 o'clock. I can check this out tomorrow. Be back here by evening. All right. Can I do anything? Yes, talk to that poacher. He said he'd seen somebody around here. And check at the pub and see if anybody picked up that glove I found. All right. And I want you to talk to a doctor, not the guy we met. I want someone else's confirmation of the fact that Carl Grant did die of a heart attack. And don't mention to Joyce that I'm taking this with me. Just over the next crossroads, and then it's the first house. OK. Want me to come in with you? No, no, it's all right. Why don't you go on down to the pub and get your bag? I'll walk down and meet you. All right. There's the house. Return the clothes I borrowed. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. Anyway, now you are here. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm all right now. I still think you shouldn't stay up in that house alone. Oh, I'm not. Cordelia, um, Mr. Mannering's assistant, is spending the night. Really? Mm. Oh, oh, good. Uh, and Mannering, is he still at the pub? Oh, he's gone back to London. Apparently, he has some things he wants to check. I see. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm being a very bad host. Can I get you a drink? Oh, no. Thank you, but I must be going. I've still got a lot of packing to do. You're still planning to leave next week? Oh, not next week. The sooner I leave, the better I'll feel. I've arranged for the removal men to ship everything out on Wednesday. The day after tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Isn't that, uh, isn't that rushing it a bit? I don't think so. There's nothing to keep me here now. Look, I must be going. I'll see you before I leave, of I'll course. I'll never forgive you if you didn't. I'll see myself out. Good night, Doctor. And thanks again. One, please. And hurry, will you? You got my bill ready? Mr. Mannering will be back tomorrow to collect his bag. He'll be here. I don't see Mr. Cross around here tonight. Old Ben, you mean? No, he was in earlier. Hey, look at after his traps, I expect. Think he'll be back? Shouldn't think so. Want to see him, do you? Yes. I'm going to try his cottage, man, to turn up there sooner or later. I think I'll do that. Oh, by the way, that glove Mr. Mannering found. Has anyone claimed it yet? Still here, right? That's funny. I didn't give it to anybody. Now, who'd want an odd glove, I wonder? Somebody with another odd glove that matches it, I expect. Oh, well, never mind. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Come again. Did you see Ben? He's left. Do you know where he lives? Well, he's got a cottage right out in the wilds. It's beyond Raven's Wood. I think we ought to go there. It's a bit dark. And you won't be able to get the car up there. You'll have to walk through the woods. So? I'm quite used to that. I was a girl guide. Shall we go? Far from here? About half a mile. You sure we can't get the car up there? Come on, the walk will do you good.
some girl guide. I resigned after the first meeting. <laughs> Wouldn't we have done better if we'd stuck to the path? Well, this way is much shorter. Lead on. Somebody in the woods. I saw you at the house the night Mr. Grant died. That's a pity. Such a pity. until I've seen you tomorrow morning. No, I can't. There's far too much to do. Now, you listen to me. You've had a very bad time in the last few days. You're suffering from nervous exhaustion. If you don't rest now, you'll have a complete breakdown. I'm feeling so much better now. I'm sure you are. These things can't be rushed. Despite popular opinion, the doctor generally knows more about medicine than the patient. Now, you're to stay right here in bed until I see you tomorrow morning. Promise? It's all right. Cordelia's going to stay with you, so you've got nothing whatever to worry about. Thank you. Good. Now you try and get some sleep. Good. Bye bye. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Ah, good. Yes, well, if you wouldn't mind uh, signing that, please. I've got a copy of a statement Miss Grant made last night. I'd like to get that signed, too. I'm afraid that'll have to wait. Oh, oh how is she? Oh, she'll be fine. It's mainly shock. I'd just like her to rest today. Uh, when can I get her to look over a statement? Well, I'll see what she's like tomorrow. Anyway, there's no great rush, is there? It's a straightforward accident. Oh, it's just a formality, that's all. But uh, I'd like to get things settled. The coroner will need all the facts. Yes, well, I'll let you know when she's well enough. Now I must get on with the rest of my rounds. I'll show you out. Don't hesitate to ring me if there's anything you want. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, you saw the body last night. Yes. Poor old Ben. From the position of the wound, well, was there anything that made you think it wasn't an accident? Oh, no, no. I'm not a policeman, but I think it's fairly obvious what happened. I've dealt with shooting accidents before. A man gets careless carrying a gun, going through a hedge, a twig touches the trigger. It happens all too easily. But a man like Ben Cross, I mean, he's been handling guns all his life. Mm. And perhaps that's just the trouble. Familiarity breeding contempt. The constable doesn't have any doubts about it, does he? No, not that I know of. Just me. I think you've got too much imagination. You're probably quite right. Thank you, Doctor. I'll see you in the morning. About 11. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, yes, well, I'd uh, better be on my way, too. Look, I'll leave Miss Grant's statement with you. All right. Have you found out whether there was anybody else in the woods when uh, it happened? No, and I don't think we will. But we heard somebody just after the shot, someone running. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll certainly check into it, of course, but, uh, you know, in the country at night, noises can be very deceptive. Well, it could have been an animal or the wind, anything. I suppose so. <laughs> and if anything turns up, I'll, uh, I'll certainly let you know. And thank you for all your help. Uh, don't worry, I can find my own way out. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Anything you want? No, thanks. You're supposed to be sleeping. I can't. I keep thinking about last night, wondering if Ben was mixed up in what's been happening here. The doctor and the policeman are both quite convinced it was an accident. But you're not. No, I'm not. In fact, I'm certain that Ben Cross was murdered. <coughs> These are the rest of the 1948 papers. Thank you, Felicia. I hope we're going to find what you want soon. If I keep lugging these things around, I'm going to have muscles like Popeye. 
And just keep going. I'll buy you a Spanish dinner. Mm. Did you find anything on Dr. Richard Thornton? Uh, Sam, you don't want place of birth, schooling, that stuff, do you? No, only the things he's ready to mention in the newspaper. Yeah, well, that's very easy. He took a bullet out of a man's shoulder. Figures he's a doctor. Yeah, but this was a hood on the run. And Dr. Thornton didn't report it to the police. There was a rumor that he was sort of official medico to the mobs. So it was never proved, of course. But he had an awful big bank balance that he couldn't explain away. Did they still allow him to practice? No, no, no. He was struck off. And about uh, a couple of years ago, he appealed and was reinstated. I don't know where he is now. I do. Any luck on Carl Grant? No, but then I don't figure he was using that name at that time. I just have to keep digging. And I'll keep lugging. What a perfect relationship. Time. If that girl leaves tomorrow, we'll be too late. Did anybody see you come here? Doesn't much matter anymore. We've been cautious too long already. You weren't too cautious last night. Killing Ben. He saw me at the house. He wouldn't have talked to anybody. I told you, he never wanted to get mixed up with the police. Just a stupid, senseless murder. Don't ever speak to me like that. Do you understand? Don't ever speak to me that way. Sorry. Everything seems so simple at first. Now things are going wrong. Nothing I can't handle. I don't see how. You said yourself it'd be too late once she'd moved out. You've still got tonight. Remember, there are two of them up there now. Mannering's assistant is staying with her. Then we'll have to get rid of her. How? There is a way. You have to handle that part of it. And what will you do? Just want to be alone with that girl. In a couple of hours, I'll get all I need to know. I don't like the way things are going. I don't like it at all. You said no violence, remember? So I changed my mind. Look, you don't need me anymore. Just forget the whole thing. You take my share of the money. Forget that I was ever involved. Sorry. No chance. You're in and you're staying in. What do I have to do? Just do exactly what you're told. We'll finish it tonight. As I remember the story now, they got nearly a million dollars in gold bullion that was never recovered. It's a pretty good take. Mm. This one escaped from jail after about six months and was never picked up. Frank Ashton did his whole sentence and uh, was only recently released. I imagine the first thing he did was look for his ex-partner and found him. Do you think Grant had the bullion hidden away in his home? Either that or a clue to where it is hidden. I'll have to get back down there. Thank you, Felicia. I won't forget that spinach dinner. Well, don't worry about the food. I'll settle for more of that. Joyce. Still sleeping, good. Uh, that wasn't why I rang. It's about this shooting last night. I've been thinking about what you said. About it not being an accident? Yes. So this afternoon, I went up and had a look at Ben's cottage. Uh, someone searched that place, too. Searched it? Have you told the police? I thought I wouldn't tell the police until I was certain. I thought we might try and find out something more definite. Uh, I'd like to make a really thorough search of Ben's cottage. I'd like to help if I can. I was planning on going up there now. Uh, could you meet me there in, say, an hour? What about Joyce? You think she'll sleep through the night now? All right. See you in an hour, then. Bye. Smooth. Very smooth. Now you make sure you do as good a job when you get her up there.
Stoffe? You scared me. What are you doing? We're going to stay here for a while. Just you and I. Cordelia? you settle down? I'll dispose of this and I think I'll move your car. It might attract too much attention parked there on the road. Don't waste your time trying to get out of this place. I shan't be long. He must have told you something. I don't know what you're talking about. My father told me nothing. Your father and I were lucky enough to lay our hands on one million dollars in bullion. We hid it away. Everything went fine, except that he got out of prison. Prison? No. Why else do you think you didn't see him for all those years? Why else do you think he hid himself away down here? Because he had too much to lose. My share of one million dollars. You think it's here? Like, silly, you can't just hide that much gold. <laughs> the gold was converted into cash. And the cash was put in a safe deposit in a Swiss bank. Well, then what do you want? Somewhere in this house is a letter of authority. A password. The number of a box. I want that letter. The Swiss bank won't let me near that money without it. I want that letter and you're going to help me to find it. No! I want all his private papers.
don't think anybody will find your car for a little while. How long do you intend keeping me here? That's none of your business. All right, don't tell me. Somebody will find you sooner or later. And by that time, we'll be out of the country. We? How'd you get mixed up in this anyway? Hmm. Stroke of luck. What do you mean? Well, I had a spot of trouble a few years back, and I wanted to go somewhere and get a practice where nobody knew me. So I came here. And one of my first patients was Carl Grant. Of course, I recognized him at once. I could have handed him over to the police, but there was somebody who wanted him even more, Frank Ashton. And when Frank came out of prison, I did a deal with him. Go on. Cigarette? Thanks. Have you found what you're looking for yet? No, but you will by morning. He must have told you. Just in case he died suddenly. He must have told you how to get the money. Get up! Now think! When he died, he said, the warrior. How do you know that? What did he mean? I don't know. The warrior is just his bronze head. Oh, I will that it. Get out of the open. Look at other pieces of paper. And it's hidden. Just like your father. So clever. to be here. It's my key to a fortune. Well, then take it. Just take it and leave me alone. Well, I can't do that. I can't leave you alone. You know too much. No, please. You've got what you wanted. Now, just go. No. This is where I start clearing everything up. What? No one left to talk about me. First you, then the doctor and the other girl. I don't plan sharing this with anybody. <laughs> you do understand. It's got to be this way. in the house. We've got to get to her. Well, we'll cut across the fields. You go back to the village, get the police up here. Right.
What are you gonna do? Gotta get Ashton. Thank you.